Did you know about the Jimpy Jimpy plant in Australia? It may look harmless, but it has something painful hidden inside. If you touch it, tiny hairs can sting you very badly, making it one of the most painful plants out there. Today, in this video on the topic, Classification Systems of Plant Kingdom, we will learn about how we sort and organize plants. Think of classification systems of plant kingdom like a map guiding us through the big world of living things, kind of like a GPS helping us understand all the different types of life on Earth. So, let's dive right in and explore the need for a biological classification system. Need for Biological Classification System Organizing Diverse Plant Species One of the main purposes of this system is to systematically organize and categorize the incredible diversity of plant species. But why is this important? By classifying plants, we make it easier to study and understand various plant forms and their functions. Structured Understanding of Plant Diversity This organization helps us locate and study specific topics easily. Likewise, classifying plants allows scientists to communicate effectively and study them systematically. Let's quickly solve a question to revise what we have learned. Why is there a need for a biological classification system? The correct answer is option A. The biological classification system is necessary to organize and categorize diverse plant species systematically. Now, let's travel back in time to 1969 when an incredible man named Whitaker proposed a classification system that changed the way we see the living world. He divided living organisms into five kingdoms, Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. But how did he decide on these divisions? Whitaker's system was like a sorting hat for organisms, considering factors such as cellular and bodily complexity, nutritional methods, and more. This system helps us understand how diverse life on Earth can be. Now, Let's get to know some of the plant groups. Algae. These are fascinating aquatic organisms that can perform photosynthesis. They come in various shapes, sizes, and colors, adding beauty to our oceans. Bryophytes. These are non-vascular plants, including mosses, liverworts, and hornworts. They may lack the complex transport systems of higher plants, but they have their unique charm. Pteridophytes. Unlike bryophytes, these are vascular plants without seeds, such as ferns and horsetails. They've been around for millions of years, giving a glimpse into our planet's ancient past. Gymnosperms. These are like nature's treasure chests. They are seed-producing vascular plants with naked seeds, such as conifers and cycads. These trees provide us with valuable resources like wood and paper. Angiosperms, the crown jewels of the plant kingdom, these are flowering plants that produce seeds enclosed within a fruit. They make up most of the plants we see in our everyday lives, from roses to rice. But wait, there's more. The world of classification doesn't stop with Whitaker's system. There were many other systems, each with its own story. Let us quickly solve a question to revise what we have learned which scientists proposed the Five Kingdom classification systems in 1969? The correct answer is Option D. Robert Whittaker proposed a classification system that changed the way we see the living world. He divided living organisms into five kingdoms, Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. Let's now Take a peek at some of the earliest systems of classification of plants. Earliest systems of classification of plants. Let's start with the ancient wisdom of Aristotle, a philosopher who lived around 2000 years ago. He was one of the first to categorize plants into groups like herbs, shrubs, and trees. Just imagine, back then, there were no microscopes or advanced tools, Yet Aristotle was already exploring the plant kingdom. All these classification systems throughout history, from Aristotle to the 20th century, 
can be neatly divided into three types. Let's explore them. Artificial system. In this system, classification is based on a few morphological characters. Notable proponents of the artificial system include Theophrastus, Pliny, and Linnaeus. Basis of artificial system. Early classification systems relied on basic external features such as appearance, color, and leaf traits. These systems often focused on vegetative characteristics or the structure of the Andresium, as proposed by Linnaeus. It's important to note that artificial systems separated closely related species based on only a few characteristics. The merits of artificial system. This system uses only one or a few traits for comparison. Closely related organisms get separated. The grouping is based on external traits, which can be limiting. It doesn't reveal natural and phylogenetic relationships among plants. Natural system. In this system, classification is based on all important related characters, both external and internal. Scientists like Bentham, Hooker, Adenson, and Candole were proponents of the natural system. Basis of natural system Natural systems consider both external and internal features, including ultrastructure, anatomy, embryology, and phytochemistry. George Bentham and Joseph Dalton Hooker for example, proposed a natural classification for flowering plants. Their system accounts for a broader range of characteristics to identify more accurate affinities and relationships among plant species. Merits of natural system It is practically important, as most of the world's herbaria are based on this system of classification. Phylogenetic accuracy is prioritized, as they place more primitive groups at the beginning of the classification. The sequence of monocotes following dicotes aligns with phylogenetic relationships. The merits of natural system. It didn't always incorporate phylogenetic trends in classification. The placement of gymnosperms between dicotes and monocotes is debated. Some order placements seem unnatural, and certain groups are geographically isolated. The arrangement of groups is not always consistent. Phylogenetic system. This system is like a family tree for plants, based on their evolutionary relationships. It's like discovering your own family history, but instead, we are uncovering the ancestry of plants. Phylogeny for classification was a revolutionary idea proposed by several brilliant scientists, including Eichler, Blasey, Whitaker, Engler, Prantl and Hutchinson. These botanists paved the way for us to understand how plants are connected through evolution. In the modern era, taxonomy has advanced significantly. Here are some exciting developments, numerical taxonomy. Imagine if we could use computers to help us classify plants based on statistical methods. This is what numerical taxonomy does. It's like having a super smart assistant to organize your plant collection. Cytotaxonomy. Now, let's zoom in a bit. Cytotaxonomy classifies plants based on the structure of their cells, such as chromosome number, shape, and behavior. It's like using a plant's cellular fingerprint to identify it. Chemotaxonomy. Have you ever thought about classifying plants based on their chemical makeup? Chemotaxonomy does just that. It considers things like the nature of proteins, DNA sequences, taste, smell, and more. It's like distinguishing plants by their unique chemical signatures. Eichler classification is another milestone in plant taxonomy. It focuses on whether plants produce flowers or not. This classification divides plants into two categories. Cryptogamy. These are like the plant world's mystery novels. They don't produce flowers or seeds. Instead, they keep their reproductive parts hidden and reproduce using tiny particles called spores. Classification of Cryptogamy Thalophyta These plants have an undifferentiated plant body, like a shapeshifter in disguise. Bryophyta With a root-like structure and stem-like structure, but no vascular tissues, they're like the detectives of the plant world, 
searching for water and nutrients. Pteridophyta. These plants have a fully differentiated body with true roots, stems, and leaves, and they do have vascular tissues. It's like they have their own circulatory system. Thallophytes are further divided into subdivisions. Algae. These are the colorful characters among thallophytes, thanks to their pigments. Fungi. The non-pigmented thallophytes, often mysterious and sometimes a bit airy. Lichens. Imagine a partnership between algae and fungi, like a superhero duo. Phenerogamy. Now, these are the celebrities of the plant world. They have well-developed reproductive organs that produce seeds. It's like they have their own red carpet events. Classification of phenerogamy. Gymnosperms. These are the trendsetters with naked seeds. They don't bother with fancy fruit coverings. Angiosperms. These are the seed-bearing royalty of the plant kingdom, often seen wearing fruits. Angiosperms are further divided into subdivisions. Monocotes. These are the elegant, single cotyledon bearing plants with fibrous root systems and parallel venation in their leaves. Dicotes. These are the distinguished double cotyledon bearing plants with taproot systems and reticulate venation in their leaves. Let us quickly solve another question to revise what we have learned. What are the two main divisions of phanerogamy? The correct answer is option A. The two main divisions of phanerogamy are gymnosperms and angiosperms. Additional plant groups. Now, let's introduce two important terms that help us further understand plant classification. Tracheophytes and embryophyta. Tracheophytes. Tracheophytes are a plant group characterized by the presence of vascular tissue. This group includes pteridophytes, gymnosperms, and angiosperms. Embryophyta. Embryophyta are plants that have embryos. This category encompasses bryophytes, pteridophytes, gymnosperms, and angiosperms. So, students, in this video, we've explored the need for biological classification systems, delved into the earliest systems of plant classification, including the artificial system, natural system, phylogenetic system, cryptogamy, and phanerogamy along with some additional insights. These early systems of plant classification served as the bedrock upon which our comprehension of the natural world has been built. As we've seen, they had their strengths and limitations, but they were pivotal in shaping the path towards modern, more precise methods of classification.